Okay, Jacob starts thinking that it's time for him to go home. And so he tells Laban, you know, I've been working for you all these years and now I need to go home to my father's house. I need to get back to my business. And Laban says to Jacob, stay because the Lord has blessed me for your sake. I have learned that by experience. And Laban says, tell me what your wages are and I will give it to you. Name your price. Because he's, been, he's gotten very rich from Jacob working for him and God blessing everything Jacob has done. Laban now has 11 grandchildren, or 12, including the daughter. And he understands where these blessings are coming from. And Jacob says to Laban, You had little when I came, and I have served you, and now your cattle is a multitude. The Lord has blessed you since I came. And now, when will I provide for my family? Jacob still really has nothing. He's been making Laban rich. And Laban says, well, what will I give you? I'll give you whatever you want. And Jacob says, you will not give me anything. Because this is, again, a tradition, I think, that goes back to Abraham and the Pharaoh of Egypt and Abraham and the king of Sodom in episode 10, where Abraham said, I won't take anything from you lest you say I have made Abraham rich. Because he wants, he doesn't want them taking credit for making him rich because God is the one who makes him rich. So he says, you have not given me any, you will not give me anything. If you do this, I will keep and feed your flock. I will sort out the speckled and spotted cows, the brown sheep and the speckled and spotted goats for my hire. And that way my righteousness will answer for me. That means whatever blessing I get will be my blessing. I will keep the, 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 these goats, certain goats and certain sheep, certain cows, the ones with the spots and the speckles and the rings and the, the goats that are brown and are the brown sheep. And that way, we'll know who's blessed and who isn't. And then when it comes time for, and I will separate them from the flock. And when it comes time for counting, any of them that are not speckled and spotted, that are found with me, shall be considered stolen. So what he's saying, I will give you all the ones that are not speckled and spotted. And Laban agrees to this. So first Laban removed every ring shaped of the he goats and the speckled and spotted of the she goats and all any one with white in it. He removed all the brown sheep from the flock and he gave them to his sons and he set a three day journey between them so he said okay that's a deal and now first I'm going to take all the speckled and spotted cows and all the brown sheep out of the flock and he gave them to his sons and he said okay it's a deal now all the ones that are speckled and spotted that are born from now on are yours so he's thinking he's going to get an advantage of him over him. So what Jacob does is Jacob made these rods out of green sticks, uh, poplar, hazel, and chestnut. He got the sticks with the bark on it, and he peeled the bark, and he peeled spots 
on some sticks and on so other sticks he peel peeled rings. And what he did was he put the sticks in the watering troughs and when the cows were drinking the water is when they were mating also when the, the I suppose the uh, the female cows were being sired as they were drinking and he put the sticks in the trough and the cows started producing speckled and spotted calves and he separated those from the flocks and he, he put Laban's on one pen and his own in the other pen according to the deal that they made but what he also did was whenever the stronger cows were feeding he put the sticks in and so the strong cows produced speckled and spotted calves and then when the weak cows were feeding he took the sticks out so that Laban was getting the calves from the weak cows and Jacob was getting the calves from the strong cows so he was using these sticks to manipulate just as Laban tried to manipulate and Jacob increased greatly his flock became very large and very strong then what happened was when Jacob Jacob's flock became very large and very strong Laban's sons and Laban started to envy Jacob and they started to not like him and Le and Jacob saw this and Jacob was thinking I think it's time to leave and God came to Jacob in a dream God told Jacob in the dream I have seen all that Laban has done to you I am the God of Bethel where you vowed a vow to me and set up a pillar return to the land of your people and so Jacob gathers up all the flocks and he gathers his family and his wives together and he tells them all that Laban has done to him uh, Laban apparently Laban kept changing the deal whenever he saw Jacob getting stronger he changed the deal and then so he would say well now I want the speckled and spotted cows so then Jacob was using the sticks and he started switching it up to make himself prosper still and Laban changed the deal ten times trying to get the upper hand over Jacob and so he explained this to his wives and then he also explained to them that God had appeared to him in a dream and told him to return to Beth El so the wives considered it and they said well my fa our father doesn't have anything left to give us and we have everything <laughs> so what have we got to lose we will go with you so they got up together in secret and they took off from Laban and when Laban saw that they had taken off he chased them down and when Laban was on his way I guess uh, it was more than a day's journey and Laban was sleeping that night and God appeared to Laban in a dream and God told Laban you be sure that you don't speak to Jacob good or evil because I am protecting him so Laban caught up to Jacob the next day and he said what are you doing you took my daughters you didn't give me a chance to say goodbye to my daughters you didn't you you treat me like a thief you and 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 you accuse Jacob and he also said and you stole my idols now what had happened was Rachel had stolen his idols in those times I had as I explained in earlier episodes the idols were used for prosperity um, you know they prayed to certain gods for certain things for the crops and for the harvest and 
So he had these idols and they were his, his um, insurance. Rachel stole his idols. And Jacob had no idea that Rachel had the idols. And uh, so Laban said, accused Jacob of stealing his idols. And Jacob says to Laban, you can search my tent and search everybody, and whoever you find the idols with, let him be dead. And Laban searched everything. He searched Jacob's tent. He searched, he searched Leah's tent. And when he came to Rachel's tent, Rachel was sitting on the camel, and she was sitting on the idols. And she said to her father, Oh, uh, forgive me that I can't get up, but it's that time of the month and I can't get up right now. And so Laban didn't, let, didn't make her get up and she hid the idols. And when Laban didn't find anything, then Jacob accused him and said, What is this? You're accusing me of stealing from you? Why would I steal from you? And he gave Laban a hard time. So then they set up a pillar, and this was at a place called Gilead. They set up a, a pillar, which was a landmark of the border between them. And they made an oath together that neither one of them will cross that line to do harm to the other. Laban named the pillar... Jagar Sadutha, and Jacob named it Galid, which both mean the heap of the testimony, but in two different languages. And Jacob also named it Mizpah, which means watchtower. And he said, the Lord watch between me and you when we are not together to make sure you're not trying to pull a fast one on me. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac that he would not cross that line. So Jacob leaves the place of Gilead where he made the oath and the pillar with Laban and he went on his way and he saw a company of angels and he said, this is God's host. And he named that place Mahanaim, which means double company or two companies. And he carried on from there and he sent messengers to meet his brother Izu because he was worried about Izu, what Izu will do because Izu was wanting to kill him when he left, and now he's got to face Izu. And he sent messengers ahead with some gifts of some sheep and goats, and the messengers returned, and they said, Izu, your brother is coming to meet you, and he has 400 men with him. Jacob had nobody with him. And I guess he, in his fear... He wasn't thinking God had called him to go to Bethel. God had promised him he would return safely. And God even showed him an army of angels. But he was still afraid of Izu. And he then prays to God. And he says, God of my father Abraham and Isaac, that said to me, return to your country, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the mercies and truth you have shown me, because now I am two bands. Now this might be a clue when he named Ma the place Manahaim. He said to the name, the name Manahaim means two companies. So he was talking about himself, not about him and the angel army. So 
he says, Now I am two bands. Deliver me from my brother Izu, because I fear he will kill the women and children. You said you will surely do me good and make my seed as the sand of the sea. So he's calling on God and reminding God of his promises. But he's actually the one who seems to be forgetting God's promises or God's power to fulfill his promises because of the fear of his brother. So then he carries on and he sends he he splits up his flocks into groups and he sends group after group after group so there's like a wave of these groups of flocks and with servants to meet Izu to appease him and then he set his family up in groups and he put first he put the children of the maids ahead and then he put Leah and her children ahead of that. And then at the very back he put Rachel and Joseph. And then himself. And he sent them ahead across the brook. And in the middle of the night he stayed by himself. And he ended up wrestling with an angel all night. And when it became morning, he was still res wrestling with the angel. And he told, and the angel said, let me go. I have to go. And Jacob refused to let him go. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. And the angel said, okay, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name will no longer be Jacob. Your name is now Israel. And the name Israel means he shall rule as God. And the, the angel touched him on the hollow of his thigh where the sinew is and he gave him a limp. And at the dawn, J Jacob came across the brook and he was limping. And he named that place Penuel which means the face of God, because he says, I have seen God face to face, and I lived. So then he meets Izu. So Izu says to Jacob, what is all these sheep ahead of, that you're sending ahead of you? And Jacob says, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord Izu. So he's bowing to Izu, and he's given Izu everything. He hasn't give, given God a tenth. And all of that work that he did, he gave to Izu. And Izu says to him, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have to yourself. And Jacob said, No, I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, then receive my present, for there, ha there I have seen your face as though I would seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Take my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. So he gave all of the cows and all of the sheep and everything to Izu. And because he's seen Izu's face as if he's seen the face of God. So he didn't give God a tenth. He gave Izu like a hundred percent, or almost a hundred percent. And then Izu returned home. Jacob, um, Izu wanted to walk to, to travel with Jacob, but Jacob said, Oh no, you go ahead, I'll catch up with you, because I have women and children and we're slow, so I'll catch up with you when you get home, at home. And Izu said, Okay, so Izu left. And then Jacob went to uh, a place called Shechem, 
which was the first place where Abraham stopped, the first place God appeared to Abraham after Abraham left his father. And um, where God first appeared to Abraham and gave him these promises um, that we spoke about in episode 10. So when he gets to this place in Shechem, then he bought a piece of land from the king of Shechem, who was a Canaanite. And he made pens for his sheep and, and settled there. And the son of the king of Shechem raped Dinah, the daughter. And because he fell in love with her, he took her and raped her. And the... Uh, the the sons of Jacob found out about it and they took him and 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 brought him before Jacob and 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 the the had some some kind of a trial with the king of Shechem and Jacob and his sons and they made a deal with the king of Shechem uh, the the oldest or the 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 two the second and third son, Simon and Levi, they made a deal with the king of Shechem. They said, we can't intermarry with anyone unless they get circumcised. So if you have your whole town, every male has to be circumcised before we can intermarry between your people and our people. And so the king's son of Shechem loved Dinah so much that they agreed to be circumcised. And so they convinced their people to all be circumcised that day. And when they were all sore, and the next day they were all sore and, and hurting, and they were weak, then the two sons, the second and third oldest son, Simon and Levi, went in with their swords and into battle and slew them all, killed the whole village t for revenge over what the, the son of the king did to their sister. And Jacob got angry at Simon and Levi. And he said, what have you done? Now all of the Canaanites are going to come after us. And they said, should we let them treat our sister this way? So what they did was they used the rite of circumcision as a trick to weaken these people and they slaughtered them. So then God appears to Jacob and tells him, go to Bethel. It's like he told them before already, go, go to Bethel. And so Jacob gets all of his people to bury their idols under an oak tree and Shechem. So they were all using idols. And so he, he had them bury all their idols. He said, we have to purify ourselves. We're going to Bethel to meet my God. And so they buried the idols and they went on to Bethel and God put terror into the hearts of all the Canaanite villages around them. They were all uh, afraid of Jacob and his people because of what happened to Shechem. And when Jacob gets to Bethel, then Dinah, who was the maid of Jacob's mother, Rebekah, she died at Bethel. This was the, when Rebekah sent Jacob off, she must have sent her maid with Jacob to watch over him. So he went into Haran and married these two women and did all these things being taken care of by this maid, Dinah. And when he returned back to Bethel, 
she died and she was buried at Bethel. And then God appears to Jacob at Bethel. And God first says to Jacob, you, were, you, you will no longer be named Jacob. Your name will now be Israel. And he says, I am God Almighty. So here we see El Shaddai again. And he says, uh, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations will come from you. Kings will come from you. And I will give you the land of Abraham and Isaac to you and to your seed after you. So, and then Jacob left Bethel and when they got near Bethlehem, then Rachel gave birth. She must have been pregnant for a while, like since they left Laban, maybe, and even before that. So she was pregnant through this whole journey. And when they get to Bethlehem, Rachel gives birth and she died in childbirth. And when she died, she cried out the name of her second son. And she cried out, Ben-Nomni, which means son of my sorrow. But the father renamed him Benjamin, the son of my right hand. And the right hand is my, my might and my strength, my physical strength. Because people are normally right-handed, it's my strength. So the son of my strength. And here is where we'll end this episode. So we've gone through the journey of Jacob and him having his 12 sons and one daughter and his wives. So now he has still has uh, his wife Leah, and he has the two maids whom he had children with, and Rachel is now dead, and he has two sons uh, with their, that are, have lost their mother. And we will continue in another episode of what happens with Jacob, who is now named Israel. In our next episode, we're going to take a little break from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we're going to talk in great detail about Izu. We'll see you in the next episode.